Hello, very good morning to you. How are you out there? I hope you're well. I hope you're well and welcome to Wednesday. That's right, it's the Cafe Clairvoyance Wednesday Astrology and Spiritual Show. And we're here today to bring you a lovely, lovely show, all the updates, everything you want to know what's going on up there. And regarding your numerology, regarding just having a lovely chit chat with a very good friend of mine called Guillermo. Anyway, um, whilst we're talking here this morning, we start approximately five minutes early because it gives the it gives the producer all the time in the world to um, share the shows onto the right networks so that uh, you receive this live. And um, so I just chat for a few minutes, chat for a few minutes. I'll even play some music for you very shortly. But in the meantime, though, what I'd just like to say to you is a very, very good morning to you wherever you are in the world. And uh, maybe even some of you here, if you've just got up, uh, perhaps you need this to get you going in your day. <coughs> well, you know how it is out there. You know how it is because we're an hour later than you. We're, we're at 11 o'clock. And uh, I know some of you there are at 10 o'clock in the morning. and uh, But uh, I just hope you're having a lovely, lovely morning wherever you are and what you're doing. It's a beautiful sunny day in Spain. It's going to be a lovely hot day. And I gather we have a competition with you guys in the UK because your weather is just as good. Oh, there we go. There we go. Anyway, right. So uh, I think, first of all, with no further ado, let's go and play some. Ah, let's play this. Now, this is what you guys need. We ask you to do. We ask you to do this. And uh, we play a little music as well. So uh, this uh, to inform you what we ask you to do. And uh, uh, do you by any chance know any dragons out there? Do you know any dragons? Do you know any people you call dragons? Well, we've got three. Three very lovely little dragons, and here they are. They're going to come along now. So there we are. This is what we'd like you guys to do: is to like, share, subscribe, and. Um, uh, get the show out there. It's a free show. It's a free show, guys. So all you guys need to do is just share the love. Share the love. Share the ambience here. It's lovely to see so many people this morning out there. We've got uh, Deb. Deb Bowie says, hi, everyone. You're just so friendly, you guys. So friendly. And uh, Jay says, good morning. And uh, so does Eleni. So does Eleni here. Jay says, hot, hot here. I mean, you're doing well in the UK. You're doing well. It always used to worry me, though, when it was uh, hot around this time of the year in the UK, that suddenly it means, uh, means a lousy summer. I hope not. I hope not. Okay. And uh, my... St <laughs> What's this? <laughs> my stepmother, lol. Biggest... Ah, there's a bit dragon going. Biggest dragon going. Oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. How funny. Very, very funny there. Now, uh, yes, yeah, so just checking here. Now, uh, hopefully the internet's going to behave today, but uh, we've got some we've got some settings in place which hopefully should protect it all and keep us going. Anyway, so uh, it's Wednesday. We are on, I believe, we're on the twentieth. Yes, the the twentieth of May, year twenty twenty. We're going to have a lovely, lovely show today because uh, um, I think as we go further into the summer here. Um, um, I think it's just nice, isn't it? All of it's sunshine. And we slowly, slowly now start to come out the unlock. And uh, the producer says, hello, everyone. And I think it's a uh, follow producer here. This, uh, yeah, she wanted to say this to me, to say this to you guys. <laughs> she wants to give you a little hoot to welcome you to your day. And uh, which, which I think is lovely noise here, which is great. <laughs> yes, yes. Happy birthday to those people who are in this week, maybe having a birthday. Uh, or no people are having a birthday here. And um, if uh, you've been misbehaving in any way, shape or form, then this is from the producer. Ouch, ouch. Anyway, right, okay, let's get some music going and uh, let's see how things are going. <laughs>
good morning to you guys. Very good morning to you guys here. And uh, I think I think we've got a lot to talk about today because uh, everybody, everybody is, um, uh, well, we're all starting to get nice and warmer, but we're all in this retrograde season. So what does this all mean? What does it all mean here? What's going on up there in the, in the old stars there? I mean, uh, we're all going, scratching our heads going, what's happening next? What's happening next? Why is it sometimes here that life seems a little bit Whoa, a bit crazy, a bit crazy. We're going to go throw all the answers out there and how to handle this, how to handle this time here. Now, I think no further ado than to welcome onto the show my good friend Guillermo, all the way over from Javier, which is about 20 minutes away. Good morning. <laughs> good morning, Phil. Good morning, everybody. How are you? Yeah. It's going to be really, really uh, I think so. I think so. Just a word we the show and uh, welcome everybody who's joining the show this morning. And uh, just hope you're all well, well out there enjoying, enjoying a bit of sunshine. And uh, no matter what's happening, a bit of sunshine lifts your spirits, doesn't it? Especially uh, we, we can get out a little bit more now, which is which is absolutely fabulous. Good. Okay, so uh, we are coming to the 20th of May. We're really now starting to rock up into the summer. We start to come out of the unlock. And then all of a sudden, as we step our feet outside the doors to go and embrace what should be a, um, wow, freedom and things like this, the, 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 uh, the universe is saying here, uh, hang on a minute. Hang on a minute, perhaps. Now, here we have all this going on. And uh, we've got all these retrogrades going up there. I mean, it's like half the cosmos has just gone, sorry, we're going backwards. Or at least apparently going backwards. So how, uh, A, what's going on up there? And then uh, B, we have another question. Where, um, and by the, way, the producer and I have another question for you. So what, what is it that's going, up, uh, going on up there in the skies at the moment? Well, um, the sun's just gone into, is about to get into Gemini right now. Um, we're almost there, we have just a few minutes away. Um, and uh, that will shift the energies because we're going to go from tar Taurus, which is a, like a, a slower, can, I want to be with me, I want to do things my own rhythm kind of energy to a, a speedier, lighter kind of energy. Okay. So that's going to make us want to like connect more with people and everything. But um, don't forget that we have the North Node in Gemini too. And that North Node is really putting like the focus on two things, like in which way are you relating to people and how are you connecting to them? You know, are, are, we're going to really see a contrast from like who has the same ideas as us and who doesn't. And it's very important that we don't reject people that think differently. For example, imagine you find somebody who um, deals with the coronavirus issue in a very different way than what you believe is right. You know? mm -hmm. It's not a question of arguing and fighting with that person or trying to convince them of the way you're seeing things are right, but it's actually more a question of really understanding that they have a different life experience, they come from a different place, and their opinion is as valid as yours, which doesn't mean that they have to convince you or you have to convince them, which is what we've been doing for the last 5,000 years and which has caused wars. So let's not do wars anymore. Let's just accept that people have different perspectives. That's on the one hand. On the other hand, we have a, kind of a nice, nice little aspects depending on how conscious you are. So we have Mars in... Pisces, the watery sign of Pisces, and uh, Neptune has been there for quite a few years. It's setting like the backstage to everything that's happening. Neptune in Pisces wants peace and love, wants everything to be spiritual and beautiful and more enlightened. So that's Neptune is like helping us go through all this in a very, uh, in a beautiful way. No, in Mars here, it's um, it's very interesting because it also ties in with a Neptune uh, aspect to Mars, to Mercury and Venus. Um, on top of the retrograde planets, which are making us go inward, and Neptune with Mercury and Venus is saying, um, what do you believe? What do you think? Are you, mm, is your mind just being abducted by patriarchal old uh, conspiranoic values? Or are you using your mind to actually right now, which is a perfect time, to start thinking about what would you like uh, to do in your life, in your future? What is your ideal future about? And that Mars in Neptune is like, I like to tell the story about, um, you know, the oceanic cultures like the Polynesians mm -hmm. or the Filipinos or the Hawaiians, you know, yes. all these cultures 
they would cross the Pacific in very simple and basic reed boats. And it was a marvel for, for many people for, from our perspective. You know, we couldn't understand if they had no navigational techniques, if they had these very simple um, uh, boats, how could they possibly reach like little islands that were in the middle of nowhere? So when asked, what they said is that they simply, and they don't navigate like we do. We think, you know, we, we try and think and say and plan and say, okay, we're going to do this and then we're going to do that and I'm going to do that. And, you know, that could have worked for the last 5,000 years, like sort of, uh, not really, but that's at least the illusion was there, but that doesn't work anymore. And mm -hmm. this Mars, Neptune, and this, uh, sorry, Mars and Pisces and Neptune with Venus and Mercury is really putting the accent and the fact that we create a reality with our mind. So where is your focus, right? Okay. And as I was saying, these cultures, just imagine what they did basically is they just got in their boats and they just set their intention and they summoned the island and rowed. Yeah. And so they just started like little steps. Rowing is something very small, very tiny, very meaningless almost, but just by setting the intention and going in that direction with small symbolic actions, you and the universe will attract each other. Your your views, your future vision and you, thanks to universe, will attract and then you will reach the island. So this is very much about law of attraction, very much about setting your intention to get where you're going and using the power of your mind and your heart to achieve the goal that you want in your life here without being too set in your head, to, to mindset in that respect. And uh, I think that's quite a big thing, uh, quite a big thing that I think that we go through now because we really are being asked to change, aren't we? Aren't we? Yeah. And uh, that, that's, that's the question there. And I think here as well, I think over the next sort of few, few weeks or so, this energy is really knocking on our door really knocking on our door and um, asking us to change like this. Uh, we are letting go of the past. So, yeah, I actually agree that the retrogrades are... Th 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 then these plans don't work in a negative effect, in a sense, do they? I mean, they're just going backwards and saying, we've got to go over stuff to get you guys to look at what you have been doing and what you need to let go of. Actually, when a planet goes retrograde, it doesn't really go retrograde, just an yeah. apparent... Um, yeah. Uh, vision of it um, and uh, I was listening to this uh, podcast the other day and basically uh, retrograde this astrologer Rick Levine no Rick, oh, I think that was the name sorry Rick Levine, I'm not sure. Rick Levine. Rick Levine. yes yeah. he, he's hilarious he's hilarious yeah, <laughs> yeah. so he was saying that um, when a planet is, is retrograde except of course for Venus and Mercury which are closer to us than closer to the Sun than us um, it's basically when those planets are closer to the Earth. Yeah. So the influence, it's not a cause effect. It's not a, a don't think Western mind influence. It's more like as above is below influence. Um, the influence of those planets by being closer to us is actually greater. It's like really, it's like saying, hey, look at me. You know, this is what I'm here to show you. This is what I'm here to teach you. You know, come down of your monkey mind. And pay attention to this. Yes, yes. Oh, we are. I think all of us are saying here at the moment. I think we're paying attention to a lot that's going on, and uh, how some things there aren't working out so well in our lives, and that uh, how we need to let go. So it's interesting here. But one of the things, if uh, I believe though, if things are going right for you, if things that, that you're on the right right path, I, I really believe at the moment, even though we're in this retrograde here, you're, you're going ahead. Even though you're in mm -hmm. retrograde, because it just means you you sorted this stuff out, in which case universe is saying, yeah, get on with it. Get on with it. Get, yeah. Get, yeah, get going. It's not about stopping, holding yourself back and don't do anything. Once you've got your, once you know what you're doing and you're letting go of what you need to let go of the past, which is interesting here because a lot of you have had questions here over the past few weeks. Do I hold on to what I've been used to for the past few years or do I let go? Do I let go here? And I think the universe is, is telling you the answer. Telling you the answer here is uh, we are to look ahead. So I think you guys there would be good. Um, also here, um, Jim Bob, good morning. Good morning here. Good morning, Joe. Good morning, everybody. And uh, 
the producers is Cabby Clairvoyance is uh, on Instagram and YouTube. Yes, we um, we what's going to be happening very soon is the show, the show is going to be broadcast live on both. Both, so you'll be able to watch it on Facebook and you'll also be able to watch it on YouTube. So, and uh, that'd be good there. Uh, for those of you who just written in with questions now, um, including Jim Bob here. Um, Jim Bob, thank you very much for your questions. If we do get a chance to get around to yours, we'll do. However, we do ask that people write in before the show because then we can sort out the astrology, we can sort out the numerology, and we sort out colours. But thank you very much. But what we'll do is, uh, Jim Bob, we'll pass this on. Uh, call you Jim Bob, Claire. Claire, sorry, Claire. Uh, we will uh, pass this on to the next show that we actually come up to. But uh, it's lovely to see you guys this morning. Lovely to see you. And you're all, you're all here. And some of you are coming from um, from England. There's Paul. He says, uh, good morning, all. He's up there in Suffolk. It's lovely to see so many people online. We've got uh, 19 hearts. We've got six thumbs up and four laughs. We're doing fairly well. That's not bad, is it? And uh, Julie's online as well here. And guys, let us know where you're from. What we'd like you to do, please, is share the show. Share the show. We'd like you to like the show and also to subscribe to it, whether it's on YouTube. Um, but you'll see the links there on the Facebook page now. You just click on those and it'll take you straight to YouTube and just subscribe to the YouTube channel there. And we'll be very grateful. Very, very grateful. It's free. So what else can we ask, can we ask of you there? What else can we ask of you? It's lovely, isn't it? No. Anyway, um, those of you who've never joined the show before, this is Cafe Clairvoyance. My name is Phil Griggs. This is Guillermo, my friend, good friend Guillermo. Guillermo <laughs> is, a, is a professional astrologer. She's also a psychologist. And uh, I'm, a, I'm a spiritual medium. I work with the tarot and numerology. I also do astrology, but I'm leaving the astrology to the, to the, to the, to the boffin. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, so um, yes, we're here to entertain you, to give you a lovely show. For, for Cafe Clairvoyance, you need coffee. The Clairvoyance, coffee. Coffee is a must. Without coffee, you can't do Clairvoyance. It's impossible. Impossible. It's been, it's been scientifically proven. You can't do coffee without Clairvoyance? No. Sorry, it doesn't work. Coffee gives you a spiritual connection. It does. Coffee does. Oh, my goodness. Yes. Oh, that lovely taste, that feeling in your belly, and that just feeling I've been, and that caffeine, whoop. <laughs> become, those who don't like caffeine, I no, do apologize. I, mean, I really mean it. Yeah. Well, because when you drink coffee, for me, it's the thickness. I like to eat it with my oatly barista milk. Ah, um, uh, yes. And what is that? That warmth, that feeling that goes into your body really it's like a, a lovely moment of connection with me. And if I'm with somebody else, like with you guys now, it's also a connection with you, no? So it's about connection for me. Oh, good. Man, yeah, it connects, connects me to everything here. Coffee connects me to the world. Without that, it's like, where am I? <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> Why is everything wrong? It's not, it's just there's no coffee. Yeah, right, dear, right, dear. Okay, so we are 14 minutes past, come out to 15 minutes past 11 in Spain. We're also coming up to... Um, uh, which is about quarter past 10 in the UK. And uh, I need to get a coffee now, lol, says Joe Gardner. Dear, dear. Yeah, you can't do this show without coffee, for goodness sake, people. I mean, what do we have to do to get you to get you a coffee? Does the producer need to do this to you? See, you need do need to get your coffee. Yes. And uh, yes, because otherwise, otherwise, yeah, I mean, yeah, how do we get you up in the morning? I mean, this is what you need with a coffee. I mean, that is your sign, your sign, people, to get yourself a coffee. Get yourself going. Yes, yes, yes. And uh, just see what the uh, producer's doing at the moment. See what she's up to. Wow. wow she's, that's it. She's taking all your details and information there, which you, you've written in earlier. And uh, <laughs> I love this. I love this. This is fantastic. I mean, why rush? Why rush to get out of bed? Well, you can watch this show in bed. The Joe, I think you're the first it's person. Retrograde. To... Sorry? There's planets retrograde. Yes. When we're in retrograde, we just want to be inward, take it slowly, go inside. It's perfect to be in bed. You know, it's like really cherish your moment and be with you and with us, of course. Of, of course, yes. I mean, you guys, you guys could just watch this show wherever you like. But in bed, I think is fabulous. Fabulously fabulous. Joe, I'm impressed. That's lovely. It's made, it made my day that has made me. Oh, dear, dear. In bed with a coffee, watching Cafe Clairvoyance. Perfect place. Special the retrogrades. That's right. Okay, so um, now we're also coming up to, I believe we've got a, a new moon coming up as well. Is this right? A new moon coming up? <laughs> 
tomorrow tomorrow's the new moon it's a gemini new moon oh fantastic so, that's also it just ties in with all the rest you know it's a moon about it's a moment it's a week really to just be just think and ponder and feel and just connect with the desire of what you want to do of where you want to be it's uh really weighing out you know what's the old that you don't want anymore what is it that i want to envision and project and whatever it is you know just build the dream now or finish building it because many of you for sure are, are already normally we are with the and from there just envision how it be in six months time Yes. Okay. We we had a bit of a squiggly on the internet just there, but hopefully you all heard that. It's probably uh, probably more squiggly my end there, guys. That was your end. But if you heard all that. That's fantastic. But uh, okay. Right. Uh, hello, Shalina over in um, uh, this one. Yeah, yeah, Shalina over in uh, Benita Chell, which is a lovely place just down the road. And uh, if you guys like vegan food, go to this place. Just look up Cafe Trebus. Beautiful place. Beautiful, beautiful place. Wonderful food to do there. Uh, uh, Venus retrograde made me do it. Okay, right. Ah, <laughs> uh, okay. Venus retrograde made me do it. Is that when you set up things as well? Okay, good. Right. Okay. So uh, we've got we've got quite a few people who would um, too much noise in my head now, lol. Yes. Now, uh, interesting enough here, I'm going to do a little bit of a show coming up here about how to turn down noise in our head because that's a little bit of anxiety going on. But uh, I'll show you how to do that, guys. We'll do this on a, maybe on a Sunday show just to help you out here. Um, right. Yeah, I can, give you, I can give you a few pointers. Um, on the one hand, you can listen to the police um, song, uh, Voices Inside My Head, or, or, well, the one that says Voices Inside My Head. I can't remember right now the title. Um, echoes of things you said. No, seriously. Um, basically, when we're in our mind, it's because we're disconnected to our bodies. So we have to try and do the Gemini Mercury thing, which is instead of separation and rejection, try to reconnect and build a bridge back to our body. And a way you can do it, the most simple thing, is breathe and breathe um, from, from the um, uh, diaphragm downwards, so to say. So we want to push the diaphragm down instead of up. And the way to do that is belly breathing. And belly breathing, if you're very anxious, is really hard, almost impossible. So don't, don't try to belly breathe like bulging your belly out at, when you intake a breath. Do the opposite. Do hypopressive breathing. So what you want to do is you want to, when you blow the air out, you want to suck the stomach in and like really and even force it in more. Just tuck it in like if you want to look really good in the picture and you're like... And you do that, and then when you breathe in, the, your belly will naturally just bloop, bulge out a little bit. But you want to work on the on the um, pressing, uh, the hypopressive, you know, uh, breathing out and putting the stomach inward and the diaphragm up and pushing it, and that will release the tension in it. It's like when you when you're doing a relaxation and you tense your muscles to then relax them, relax them. It's the same principle. That's why it's a very good thing to, to, to tense all your muscles up and just hold them there for a few seconds and let them go. And then do it again and let them go and do it again, let them go. And you'll just slowly come down. Yes, 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 yes. So there you go. Very good techniques there to releasing stress. Um, the other the other thing to do is to listen to ACDC or Motorhead or Led Zeppelin on high volume. That's always a good one to do. For those of you who are young, you'll probably look at me going, what are they? <laughs> <laughs> who are they <laughs> anyway right okay so uh yes so this new moon's coming up here so it's going to be about us all starting to connect and i think it's going to be lift lift the energy a little bit and also i think it makes lovely links over to uh saturn saturn and uh um which is on, it, on its way backwards as well going heading back towards capricorn and uh but yes bit, but we've got a little bit of lift though so that's nice okay so uh um, i think it's Time to start doing a little chinwag, don't you? Chinwag and uh, 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 get some people here, start chatting away with them. Okay, so uh, let's start first of all. So we go to Teal, a lovely lady called Teal. Teal, and uh, she was born on the 26th of 8, 1955. Uh, she's a 369. The card is the, her, uh, her card, card is the, is the um, hermit card. And uh, it comes a hermit, which is very much about um, needing to go inwards. The needing to go inwards there. 
And uh, yeah. oh, sorry, sorry, her name's Liz. Beg your pardon. No, she's gone for the colour teal. Sorry, I've just seen it the way it's written there. Beg your pardon. So this is Liz. Liz, uh, twenty. Okay, so you're looking at me. You're, yes, yes. You, uh, so you're looking at me, going, "Hey, hang on a minute. Who is teal? No, I just saw it here. This is Liz. Uh, colour is teal. She's uh, a three six nine. She's buying um, twenty sixty eight ninety fifty five. The colour's a hermit, and uh, also here. Um, Liz, the car for you this year is the High Priestess. So it is very much about doing stuff which is on the spiritual side. Very much on the spiritual side. And I think uh, uh, because your your question here is, is uh, where am I going? I need a bit of a boot <laughs> in the right direction. A boot in the right direction. So this is this is the energy card that comes up for you just at the moment. So whatever you're doing on a spiritual sense here, I would say by these cards here to keep on going on what you're learning. However, what we learn is one thing. What this card here comes up and says, though, to me, and you know, with the resonation I pick up with this here, is we need to put into practice what we've learned. Otherwise, we just keep theory in our head and we're not doing practical with our, with our life and life, souls, and body. Now, um, before going to the other parts of numerology here, I think it's time to go over to Javier. Over to have you there and go speak to our astrologer. Gemma, what would you like to say to Liz? Well, um, the first thing that brought my attention to from Liz's chart is that, oh, well, she's a, she's a Virgo, um, Sun conjunct uh, Venus. So Sun conjunct Venus and in Virgo is basically a people pleaser. So somebody who wants to really, you know, just serve others, please others, be nice, be warm, um, and all this. But... Your North Node, Lilith, and the Moon is in Sagittarius. So um, what what that all wants, that Virgo Sagittarius energy, plus there's um, Uranus with Chiron, what it wants is integration, is, is really connect with you. It's, it's really connect with your intuition, with what you really want, but not rejecting what other people want, because if... Like what, what I was saying before, with, uh, because of the energies right now, it'll be very obvious. Um, we are people pleasers when we don't accept ourselves and we try to comply to what other people think and want. But if we learn to acknowledge what other people think and want and what I think and want, and even if it's different, it's okay, then it would be easier for me to follow my own intuition with that North Node in Gemini and not get lost in doubts, in I don't know what to do, and what are they going to think about me, and all that stuff. So that's very important for you. Really integrate, connect with you, be you, and from there, from you feeling good with you, whatever comes out to serve others, that would be okay. But if not, it's important that you connect with yourself, and with your heart, and with your intuition. And to do that, I always uh, tell people that the easy step is to learn to choose the tiny things in life that bring you pleasure, okay? Mm -hmm. Learn to choose the tiny things in life that bring you pleasure. From objects, clothes, food, meals, when you go out, choose. The more you choose, the more your heart starts pounding and working and actually being in alignment with you. Okay, 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 okay. Now, what's gonna be interesting here around you coming back to the tarot, which I think is important. Lovely, lovely um, analogy there. Thank you very much. I think it, it's very much about you, yes, staying in control. So we've got the emperor here. But I say stay in control, but having a, a power to yourself here. What we're doing though, and this is what we've got to be careful with the seven of swords and the tower card here, is we're not giving away. We're just giving away. And it will especially be about what you're capable of yourself. So this is about you really enhancing your own power here. And if you were to do that, then I think here that uh, you would then be strong. Um, with regarding where do you go to get this shift, this shove in the right direction, is to start doing stuff for yourself, focusing on yourself. And uh, this very much is a year of change, letting go of the old, what will people think? And uh, how will they be? Will they still like me and love me and all sorts of this? Um, most of the time here, people are not thinking the way you're thinking. That's your thinking. That's your no, th and the, the consequence of doing that, this is for everybody. So when, when I'm a people pleaser, I'm all the, all the time, I'm in, in, inside other people's minds. I'm actually invading other people's minds. 
to show them an image of me that they will think is is harmonious, is pleasant, and thus I'll be accepted. But what you're doing is manipulating. Mm -hmm. So you're manipulating, you're invading other people's minds, you're living other people's lives, and you're not living your own. And by doing that, you're also sucking in people's emotional uh, energy, the low stuff. Yes. So yes. there's no advantage to that. Yes. There's absolutely no advantage to that. Yes. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. I think um, I, I totally agree with that, that, that there. And I think that uh, there is a real need because otherwise here we're, um, and it's that great word, we self-sabotage our own success because we're focusing on everybody else. So. No, we don't need to go and do that. Okay, now uh, let's go over to a very nice lady called uh, Beatrice. Now, Beatrice here, I hope she's watching the show this morning. I haven't seen her come up on the feed. She is, she is. Yes. I saw her there. You saw her there. Okay, good morning, Beatrice. Good morning, morning, morning to you. Now, um, your question here was very much relating to uh, that you're a violin teacher. Lovely, lovely. I've always loved musical people on the show. And um, if you just want to give us a hello, then I can put you up on the live feed here. Oh, excuse me, got a hiccup this morning. It's like croissants. Anyway, <laughs> you've got to eat croissants in Spain uh, and coffee. I just had one. It was, oh. Mm. Oh, it's awesome. Oh, no, but there we go. There we go. Oh, dear, dear. Anyway, so um, what we're looking at here, what we're looking at here, your your numbers here are very interesting because uh, you're a 246. 246 in your uh, numerology. And, and as I'm looking at this here, just these numbers here, is the, the, the six wants to find the sort of power here, wants to be in a control. Now, interesting here, you want to be a music teacher and you're concerned about the environment that you're in. And um, is this something you've got to adapt to? Is this something you've got to uh, change in some respect here? What is it? Why is it we're not very happy in these, the, these sort of establishments? And uh, what's, what's interesting with this here, with your 246, is... Um, I would say here that maybe there's another part here because your six is a powerful number. Your six is very powerful. And I would also say here, have you thought about your own musical places rather than working with everybody else? What about people coming to you? What about people coming to you? That's the energy I'm seeing there. And uh, because your six here is very much about that energy. And I'm just looking for, I'll just get your card in a minute because it's in another part here. Uh, yes, there it is. There it is here. Because it really is about the lovers. The lovers here is, now the lovers card here is very much about, yes, it's all very nice about fitting in with everybody else. But there's the other energy with this too. And that very much is about here is loving yourself, but also loving what you do. And actually rather than fitting in with everybody else, Sometimes we need to fit in, people need to fit in with you. Turn it around. Turn it around, my dear. That's what I would see with this. And uh, so the lover's card here generates the environment that you want, not what other people want. It's for you. And um, and I think here, and then it comes into a little bit of this um, belief business, and I think uh, that's, that's where we get stronger. Anyway, so I'm going to pass straight over the astrology over to Javier and Guillermo. Guillermo, how do you feel about this? Hi, Beatrice. Well, um, you've got an, a solar eclipse in Libra and lunar eclipse in Aries. Ooh. And that's all about Ooh. achieving that balance between, um, you know, who you are and who the other person is. So it's about really finding the sweet spot from being maybe too closed in and with yourself and with others. Uh, because if not, if there's an imbalance, everything will go off whack. You've also got Lilith with Chiron and Lilith in Cancer 11th, which is about really, in, just to put it very straightforward, it's about opening the heart to include others. Um, but that doesn't mean giving, as Phil was saying, it's not about giving myself away to others because that would create imbalance in the give and take. And it's not about me being hyper selfish and alone and on my own. It's about really opening your heart and embracing others. And I think the uh, what Phil said of you know doing something yourself and having people come to you is a wonderful idea. Mm. And I think that would be good there because your first number there is a five and five is freedom. The three is the need to communicate. 
to communicate a bit with people in that way. Now, interesting enough is that coming to this year, your numerology is um, you, you, you become a one, two, three. The three is the primary number here, which is very much about um, connecting with people, bringing people to you, networking in your own environment, but it's for you. It's for you because there's a one part here. The one part here, it says, I'm the boss, I'm in control, and take that power. The two here is the lovely music you bring and the um, having yourself and an instrument and the way people can learn from you. It's just fabulous. It's beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. And I, just, I just got something for Beatrice. I just got an image for you, Beatrice. So it's, a, it's like I want you to like do like a meditation in which you envision yourself as a um, five, six-year-old child and you're going down the street and you have a, a loving set of parents. It doesn't have to be your own parents, but just imagine you have a, an unconditionally loving parents and you're walking down the street and wherever you want to go, you want to stop, you want to see something and they stop with you and you tell them what you're seeing and they're like, wow, isn't that cool? And then you say you want a balloon and they buy it for you. So I want you to envision yourself as a five or six year old child just walking down the streets with loving parents or loving grown-ups, if you don't want, don't want to imagine your parents' face, um, just saying, you know, just acknowledging you and giving you whatever you want and just enjoying yourself as, as a child, okay? So that registers in your brain and in your body. So I really want you to feel it, okay? Sometimes we need to connect with our, with our inner child and, and be young, do crazy, funny, stupid things, which are just fantastically funny, which sometimes we think we get, oh, no, no, I can't do that. What will people think? No, I can't do it. Go do it. Go do crazy things. Crazy things. Yes. All right. Yes. Yeah, so there's your card here as well, which is the card of Tarot spreads here. And that's interesting. That's strength. It's about taking on your own power. The Knight of Swords. This is about galloping forwards to say, take care of your own control here. Use your own initiative with the Six of Rods. Use your initiative and feel that power coming on there. And I think you'd be, uh, I think, I, I can feel your energy already. It's like, oh, I could do this, I could do this. Of course you could. Of course you could. Get on there and go and do it, girl. Well done. Well done. In fact, I think you need, uh, I think you, know you what, need Phil? one of these. Phil, you know what? You don't know, I don't think if you know Beatrice's um, surname is Lead Better. Lead Better. Lead Better by <laughs> design. By your own design. <laughs> There, I think that, that's, that's lovely there. Here's a little hoot for you all, just to say hello. Do you like that? A little hoot. Listen over all here. And uh, yes, be careful that you don't eat too many croissants this morning, because this happens. We don't want that now. Be careful now. <laughs> and uh, okay, right. Okay, so... Uh, <clears throat> Let's have a look here. Let's go. Let's go and see what uh, what's going on over there in the producers' area of the room here. Because I gather she's talking to a few people and just keeping everyone up to date. I just listen to what's going in out there. Thank you very. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I couldn't keep up with the producer. And she's doing a fabulous job up there. There's Deborah at the other end of her studio. You should see her studio here. It's like the Starship Enterprise. Starship Enterprise with all the computers around her, making sure the show works fine. So, so a big thank you to my, to my lovely wife there, Deborah, who's doing all this. Big thank you. Keep it all up. Right. Okay. Let's get on here. Let's go and look at Dawn. Dawn. Dawn, Dawn, Dawn. Now, Dawn is the colour purple. Love the colour purple. And uh, she's a, a 30 or a 303 in numerology. And uh, your question is, I love questions like this, what's next? <laughs> I love questions like this, what's next? What's next is, well, what if the Empress here is the creator of the feminine self? It's the creator of one's own power. So what's next is, is, hey, what is it that you want to do for yourself? that will bring on the power for you? What is it that you want to do that's that's what's next for you? So if you were to take the power back onto yourself and use this, that would be good. Now you're a communicator because you're a three. You've got a zero there. You've got a karmic zero, which is like saying, what do I want to fill my life up with that could be exciting? 
could be very different, could be uh, engaging in some respect here. Well, that's that's pretty good here, it's pretty good. And then uh, I'm just gonna say here, as I'm doing this, I just wanna come back very, very briefly and uh, to find this, no, I'll find it. Oh, no, that'll do. Oh, cool. This is Pui and Pui Lee. They're two twins that come on the show. They're on last night. They're both very, very psychic. Uh, do we be, we're gonna have a little invite to them, I think, to come up on the show in the not too distant future. And uh, um, just to join in in one of the shows here to give a little bit of a thought on their part here. But they, they are brilliant. They join in and they're lovely, lovely twins. So we'll invite them on there. Anyway, Dawn, um, so what's next here? Well, it really is about this. And what is it that you want to do for yourself, especially when it comes on to the spiritual side or doing something for you that makes you feel really good about yourself? Now, this is quite personal in this side here. Is it something health-wise where you want to go on journeys, for instance, go walking, hiking, go and do things that bring out the fresh air, the countryside, make you feel really good? Make it feel really good about you because that's, I mean, look at that picture there, there in the snow. It's fantastic. Um, yes, to go and do adventure. Adventure is a big thing with you. And I think, Dawn, if you could do something which gives you the freedom of adventure, then I think that is as inspiring as it could come. You're in a personal year eight, personal year eight. And I also think with this energy here as well is that uh, this is about harnessing your own power. So you know, what's next here is is you. That's what's next, it's you. It's finding out your own goodness there. And I think here as well, and I feel this energy as well, is that uh, um, is being aware sometimes here, what we're all going through, all going through, all changing in this respect here, is that we're having, we're harnessing this new energy where we actually start focusing on ourselves. In the past here, people would have gone, Ooh, you're just self-centered. You're just looking always about you. No, this needs to be about ourselves. But it's about bringing out the feminicity of love, light, all this area here. Mm. And it's interesting, today, today is itself here, on the date it is today, it's uh, uh, the day's number is an 11. So it very much is about healing yourself, building yourself here, mm -hmm. very much uh, looking after yourself. If you need a croissant, have a croissant. If you need a coffee, have a coffee, whatever it is. But do something that makes you feel good for you, because 11 day very much is about healing yourself. And when you're healing yourself, you're often healing other people too. Anyway, let's go over to the studios. The studios in heavier, well, kitchen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 11 is also a number of like, uh, like the yin yang, you know, it's um, again, it's the, uh, the theme of integration. And again, it's the theme of the inner child because you have um, North Node, Uranus, Lilith, and Venus in Leo. And then some Pluto is in Virgo. Um, so the, all the Leo planets are saying, you know, have fun, be it, bring out your inner child, uh, be you, be creative, have, you know, just go out there in the world and do whatever you want. Whereas Pluto, uh, Sun in Virgo are, is more like, yeah, but do something with it, you know, not, not just have fun per se, but you got to to do something practical with it and you gotta you know go out there and be there's Chiron Pisces be a bit of a healer um and then that Saturn Jupiter in in Capricorn is like pulling the other direction it's like no no no. you got to be serious you got to be formal you got to be a teacher so I guess it's a lifetime of you know doing those three aspects of being a teacher being formal uh being a child or being more childlike and more creative and then putting that to use in some sort. But it's interesting, like Phil was saying before, it's important that when uh, you weigh it out, that there's more fun than the other, the opposite. It's like the image is a bit like being a kindergarten teacher, you know, where you're the ruler, you're the leader, but um, you're having fun with the children, you're playing with them, you're guiding them through you being you in your best version, which is through your creativity. And I think it's about bringing that out more into the world. And there's moon in cancer also, which is interesting um, because that moon in cancer, moon in cancer is mommy hated somebody, um, normally dad. Um, and uh, that gives them a message to um, like a mixed message in the world. And you've got the Uranus of, um, you know, I love you very much, but there's danger out there. So when you have this message, you're very much afraid of bringing your true self out there. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's it's about doing something silly, 
um, I don't know, maybe dancing in public or something that you like the other day I went to the beach and as the sun was going down, you know, there's people walking all over the place and um, it wasn't too crowded, but there was people, there was quite enough people around the, the, the boardwalk, but on the beach, there was this woman on her own, just dancing, just dancing there. And I thought, wow, that is so cool. That you know? is cool. So that I, is so cool that. to do that. Yet we are terrified to go do that, thinking, what will people think? What will people think yeah. when we start dancing on the beach there? Yes, I'll, I'll be quite happy to do that. Quite happy. I'll do that exactly. all the time anyway. If there's so, a beach or not so a beach. I, I yeah. invite you, Dawn, to do that, to just go out to the beach, um, put some music on your phone and just dance for a little while and see how that feels, mm. you know? Now, it doesn't have to be a totally secluded beach and it doesn't have to be a totally public beach, but something in between. So you get out, out of your comfort zone and you actually experience yourself doing that. I think if you did that, very after a while, you have everybody joining in. That'd be fantastic. Well, she says, that's why I'm so confused then. Well, actually, no, you don't need to be confused at all because I think it's doing everything. Doing everything, but doing and, everything for you. Your and we're starting an era of creative leaders, Don, where, you know, that era where the leaders were like very um, mean and rude and bad and punishing. That's finished. That's over with. Nobody wants to play with that. Yes. It's, it's all about creative leaders nowadays. Yes. Yeah, I think so. I I think it very much is about creative leaders. And I think it's about having our own leadership within ourselves that could be very creative, funny, enjoyable. And this is what we're going to see, I think, coming into the world. People start enjoying themselves a lot more where, where you all yeah. used to be. Well, no, no, you've got to be a certain way. You've got to be um, highly established. And OK, yeah, be highly established, whatever you're doing here. But enjoy yourself. Enjoy yourself here. Because you've got cards here, whereas the moon, we say, you're saying, where am I going? What am I doing? We're, we're up here too much. Up here too much. But yeah. really, and, your two and, of swords reversed is about being free. Free. And your eight of cups here reversed is about letting go of the past. Let go of the past here, the old stigmas of the past here, and going, I'm free. Yes. And you probably yeah. get some child and running up to you saying, I'm four. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Bad. I want to turn the, the people pleasing thing around a bit because, uh, like I said before, people pleasing is all about going out of your mind, getting into somebody else's mind and manipulating them. But then when you do that, um, the people in front of you feel very uncomfortable with yeah. you. So then you think please them even more and they'll feel more uncomfortable because they're like, um, 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 she's invading me. I don't know. I'm not aware of this, but I feel awkward in front of her. And so. You know, the people pleaser has this, oh, oh, how can I help you? Uh, what, what can I do for you? Oh, 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 yes, would you like this? Oh, I'll take the back for you. That's a people pleaser. It's like, the It doesn't look, it's, <laughs> the energy is yucky. The energy yes. is yucky. Yes. So there's like nothing good about being that kind of people pleaser. Now, what about creative leadership? So how's a, a creative leader, people pleaser type of person? So I'm in me, I know what I want and what I love, and I just do whatever comes out of my heart. Yeah. And from here, I'm enjoying myself. And people just, you know, come to me because I have, I exude this vibe of fun that everybody wants to connect with. And that's what um, Dawn's Lilith and Leo is about. Yeah. Lilith, you've got to get out there and dance young lady dance 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 and don't worry go along with your bike and do this <laughs> squeak everybody i mean one of the things i did the other day and i thought it's hilarious is well actually it's the early part of the lockdown um everyone's walking around the shops and everyone was so serious wearing all these masks which uh okay if you wear a mask it's great if you don't it's up to, up to you but the most serious the funniest thing was is everyone was so serious it's almost like holding on to their trolleys was the most important thing going keeping a very straight solemn face and uh, as I was crossing the aisles with people, I was going, hello, hello. <laughs> and these people actually startled, looked at me, go, he just said hello. He just said hello, what is it, is this? And then after a while, they all warmed up. And then people, as we were crossing the aisles, started to say, hello, hello. <laughs> it all got quite giggly. That's what you need, exactly. you know. You need to have a giggle with the griggles. Yeah. A giggle with the griggles. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, Dawn is, her name is Dawn. It's all about the rising sun. Mm. So Dawn, do the dancing on the beach with the rising sun. There you go. There you go. Oh my goodness. That'd be fantastic. That'd be fantastic. Yes. And then the next day you bring out a couple of friends and then within a few days or maybe a week, you'll get a community around you. 
Now that's interesting here because I think Dawn is the sort of lady who's going to do that. In fact, we'll film her next week on the beach and we'll get everybody down there. How's that? Dawn, there you are. There's your task. Okay? Right. Fine. Fantastic. Okay. Carmina. 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 Carmina is, uh, she's a 268. 268. She's a 15th, 11th, 1971. And uh, she's 268. And uh, the eight card here is very powerful for her. And um, uh, a lot of people with the, with the eight numbers are, um, are normally very, very strong people. And uh, she's asked here, what about her career? Her career. So uh, thank you, Deborah. She's put this, the producer there, just said here, Carmina. And uh, her card here is strength. Card is strength. Now, strength is an interesting one in this particular arena at the moment. Because I feel here, whatever you're doing in your life at the moment, when you're looking at your career, is would you understand here that you're still looking for what you want? And this is interesting here. I get a little bit of hesitation from you. Like, you're, hmm, where is it I'm going? What is it I want to go and do? So to, to go and throw weight into something and go and rate something here and feel, hey, I'll, I'll just do that. May not be you'll be throwing a lot of weight into the direction that you might not feel completely happy with. However, um, one thing that comes to you here as well here, would you understand you're pretty good at organising people or you like sort of showing, telling people what to do or guiding people in some way because that comes up here. There's also another element here which is your two. says you've got to work with people in some respects. You need people around you. To work in a job where you're just by yourself, for example, isn't, isn't your way. But I say it would be about people. Now, it's interesting here because this year, you're in a personal year three. Uh, which is very much about the Empress, very much about the Empress. And the Empress card here is, and the, en uh, the energy of the Empress coming into this year is about your learning, is about putting into uh, a divine, coming out with more feminity and something that works from your heart. Uh, I also would understand a lot about children around you somewhere, uh, children here. And I also, I would also say here too, that there's a, there's a real need to, um, do something this year that may be very different, very different career-wise, and see what it takes you. But it's something I think you're going to discover yourself, but get right inside yourself, feel that energy, and away you go. Hmm. Let's go over to Javier. To <laughs> For Camina, um, it's... I guess, uh, yeah, I can see the power. She's a sun in Scorpio. Um, um, so that's, there's a, it's a strong chart. It's a strong, powerful chart. But at the same time, there's a moon, Lilith, and Uranus, and Libra. So it's also, um, that's the soft side of her. You know, she might come through as a softer person. Again, more subservient uh, or more caretaking of others. Yep. But there's, um, Neptune, Jupiter, Mercury, and Venus in Sagittarius. And wow. Sagittarius is all about going out there and going forward. And North Node is in Aquarius, which amongst other things is about it's about looking at your at your goals and going further. And then you have Chiron Aries and uh, there was something else in Pisces, I think. No. Ah, where is it? Oh yeah, Mars in Pisces. And Mars and Pisces, as I said before, it's about the ability to set intentions. So also the spiritual warrior, it's um, it's a sort of, it gives you a bit of leadership. But the key for you, I think, is it's all about being able, there's also a sun Lilith like before. So it's again, you know, shine from within. But the important thing is that you, your, your point of view, you open it up because it can go very narrow. Mm -hmm. And if your point of view, too narrow then the fear you're in touch with with that um, Lilith moon which makes you very sensitive uh, the Lilith Uranus which makes you want to just um, try to serve other people and do what other people want and betray yourself and then the Lilith Sun you want to really be you and that hurts when you're not so if you get locked in there, then you can get a bit obsessive and that Scorpio sun will suddenly just be like controlling everything. Since I can't be me, then I have to get everything under control type thing. Um, so the key for you is to look up and look at the horizon. You know, set your views at a long term. Look for long term goals. Go into go into nature and go wherever. I don't know where you live. If you if you live in the city, then go anywhere where you get a large horizon. It's it's all about 
uh, relative, making every um, what you feel and what you believe in life, making it relative. There's mm. so much more important things in life than just you know being obsessed of what's close and nearby, which will get you in contact with fear if you do. Because the more you try to uh, control and, and and obsess over something and analyze and so forth, the more the fear will be activated in you, and you can't get rid of it. Okay. No, I, I understand this. I understand this completely. I really felt that you, you've got a lot of strength there, but I also see where sometimes it's, uh, it gets lost a little bit, a bit confused. But I feel if you're in a place like nature, whether you're by the sea or in, a, in the woods or somewhere like this, and just feeling yourself, feeling that, that, that energy of yourself, we'll put it in nicer words, <laughs> and uh, that I, I think you, that you'll be in a, in a lovely, lovely place. Uh, your cards here as well also show me here that you're moving on. You're moving on in your life in different ways. Um, now, I'm not gonna, I'm not in a show here to go and do everything about the personal side of life here in that respect, but uh, it looks like you're, that you're, you're breaking away from particular people in your life and now you're looking for something new. And uh, there's a lot of sensitivity here. So, um, at the same point though, I think it's um, that need to break free here. And I think, also here, yeah, um, the way this card comes up, which is the Page of Wands, the Page of Wands here, it is a learning card, but it's it's learning when it's positive, when we're always being good to ourselves. Always being, look at the positives, just be aware not to look at the negatives, because I think that's where we go to find the rising in this, to find the sunshine. And uh, it, I think you can find that. And I think this particular time period we're going through is learning not to hold on to the old past, but to let it go and shine with something new that really resonates in you. And sometimes here, we're scared to find ourselves sometimes because we're used to doing everything for everybody else. But uh, when we suddenly find ourselves, oh my goodness, it's a beautiful place. The world becomes very much a beautiful place. Yeah. And, so and, uh, yes. Yes. If you find yourself, Carmina, just getting stuck anywhere and things don't come out as you wish, then just let go and focus your energy elsewhere. Don't let yourself, don't let that energy of uh, frustration accumulate in you. Take it as a sign, as a signal that it's you should look to another direction. Absolutely. 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 Thank you very much, sir. So, okay, uh, where are we going now? We have got, we've got Deb. We've got Deb and she's gone for the color black. Okay, I love the color black, it's a lovely color. And, uh, okay, oh, Ellie says, great show. Bye, everyone. Oh, goodbye, Ellie. <laughs> Maybe see you again soon. Anyway, um, she's a, a 336. She's a 336, and uh, she's got a card here which says, um, well, actually, it's an interesting card here because it's all about the lovers, all about lovers. So it's, it's very much about you, about friendships, partnerships. And her question is, am I suited to the Scorpio sign? And will there be ups and downs along the way? Okay, now this is interesting here because we look at the traits of a Scorpio. Um, we, we, there's either of the part here says we're very strong, very in touch with ourselves and know that we're very safe. But if we're getting the opposite of this, then we, we start doing things um, we, we start becoming very negative, Scorpio. In fact, we jump over the other side of the zodiac and uh, we start picking up the, the negative traits of the opposite sign. So when you're in your power, when you're in power here, just by chatting this bit, chatting this bit here, but I'm going to get the main part here from um, from Guillermo. But uh, uh, am I suited to Scorpio? Yes, we are. That's what your soul's purpose was, to come down here and work as a Scorpio. And uh, to be to, to have your own power there to go very deep within yourself to enhance and be connected to that and uh, be be in touch with it. Your three three six, the thirty three here sometimes says to me here that uh, sometimes that your energy resonates very very high, very very high. And when you have a very high energy with a thirty three, sometimes it's like why is everybody else not thinking the same way as I do? Why is everybody else not resonating the same way as I do? It's because we're we're up there. And sometimes we're, we're not here to, to get everybody else to think the same way we do. We just need to, we do accept this is the way we think, we think, or you think, do accept the way you think, but don't, you don't need to bring it onto everybody else. I mean, it's just a fact of, actually, I know. I sense things and I know things. And sometimes when you talk to a Scorpio and you often say to them, um, how do you know that? They just go, I know. 
that's all the answer they need to give. I, I know. And uh, so you know things. So, and sometimes here, you know things other people don't know. And then you're questioning, yeah, well, how come they don't know? Is there something wrong with me? No, nothing wrong at all. If anything, your 33 is a loving, lovely energy, beautiful energy. And uh, so the lovers here is about loving life, knowing you know things that other people don't, or in connection with things other people don't. And it's, uh, you're in a personal year seven, so I can understand why you're asking this, because it makes us very, very psychic, very, very spiritual, and uh, very connected in that way. Very connected in that way, Deb. So uh, where your question is concerned here, yes, I think you are suited to that sign, if you're understanding this 33 energy. Yes. Paul's a Scorpio yes. and he says, I know. <laughs> yeah. So I love it. The thing is, Phil, the Scorpio energy, when it's resonating high, is very similar to the Leo energy. It's mm. about magnetism. Mm. So basically, you don't have to speak. You don't have to do much. It really doesn't matter what you say when you're resonating with a high Scorpio because your, your magnetic field is, is, is exuding um, uh, an energy that allows people to connect with their own talents and known words are needed. Mm, so yes. the high Scorpio. Oh, when you get a high Scorpio, a high Leo, is like the, they take over the place. Is that, well, it, it could be extremely intense and passionate with the Scorpio and uh, very powerful with the Leo. Yes. There again, you get a Capricorn there who just goes, whatever. Just get on with it. <laughs> That's us too. That's us too. <laughs> anyway. No, no, but I'm a, I'm a Capricorn, and so is De and so is Deborah, and so are you. But um, I'm a Scorpio rising, <laughs> and I have Leo on my midheaven. Oh, to heaven help, heaven help, universe. <laughs> no, I'm so a this is an example of a high Scorpio with a high Leo. No. Well, I'm, I'm Pisces <laughs> rising. Goes, yes, 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 yes. How nice. But I've got Sagittarius Midheaven and says here, okay, well, I'm I'm off somewhere. I'm going off to the beach. You guys carry on. <laughs> yeah. That's a good thing you have a Capricorn because the Sagittarius in Midheaven with the Pisces rising is, what? Where'd you go? Where'd you go? Yeah, I love that because the <laughs> only thing is that people say to me, <laughs> Ellie says, I'm back. Sorry about that. My food shop just came. I mean, your food shop got no idea what's going on. He's obviously not a Scorpio. <laughs> anyway, so you just got back up early. Lovely to see you here. And uh, I just think this is all very funny, very funny, very jokey, very funny. And uh, yeah, so and, and I think as well is that uh, for you, Deb, here, I think it's, it's being in that power there. So, yes, uh, I'll pass you on there, pass you on there. So, uh, how's her chart there regarding this at the moment for Deb? Is she resonating a strong pie? Is she resonating a strong Scorpio? Um, I, I, I don't look at, um, I've just got, you know, look at the chart of her birth. Uh, yeah, 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 birth. yeah, sorry, yeah. So I wouldn't know, but um, just because she's a Scorpio, I would tell, I would tell you that, um, doo -doo -doo -doo, where are you, Carmina? Um, as a Scorpio, it's very important this year that you realize when you see, like Scorpio, we can get very suspicious and very judgmental about people, you know, and this is good, this is bad, this is, and this show is all about integration. <laughs> and the way to integrate that is basically understanding that when you are suspicious of people or judgmental of people or critical of people, or if you feel pe pe people are criticizing you, same energy, same exact energy. What's important there is to actually open your heart and accept people's difference and accept where they're coming from. That doesn't mean that you have to go out and have a coffee with them or anything, but it's uh, learning that judging comes from your uh, the terror that inhabits you. So if we attend our own fears and our own terror and you know accept ourselves with that and say, okay, I'm feeling this, I just let it go. And then don't close the doors for yourself by mm -hmm. judging others. Just mm -hmm. say, okay, well, this person has something to bring to me. I don't know what it is. Don't think about it because if you think about it again, you're judging. So you just want to say something very simple, which is, oh, she's weird. Okay, but I'm not going to close my doors. So I accept her weirdness as is because she's reflecting a part of me. What part of me is it? I don't care. Okay, that's basically the, the strategy. I, I totally agree with that because your your cards come up here. The power card through this is a Knight of Swords. 
And uh, in many respects here, I would just say in a nice as possible way, get on with it. <laughs> do it, do your stuff. That's going to be the strongest thing there. Well, okay. Uh, all clairvoyance shows are available um, on Cafe Clairvoyance page on Facebook. Uh, Liz, you just joined us, says, hi, I'm late. Uh, we did yours at the very start of the show, which is about an hour ago. So, well, actually, you know, about 40 minutes ago. So uh, when the show um, comes up on the Facebook and YouTube, uh, you'll be able to go back and rewatch it. All very interesting. We, we spoke about you a lot. All different things. All exciting. Anyway. <laughs> Um, it's funny actually we're saying like that it feels like you're talking talk to me behind their back when they suddenly come on and say hi I'm late but we already, well, yes we've already done the part about you but it was interesting it was interesting and I hope you find it there uh, right oh this is nice this is nice this is nice this is from Beatrice we did a reading for her earlier she wanted to say thank you so much for my reading earlier Guillermo and Phil resonates very well what I've been feeling it really helps me I didn't manage to post a comment earlier. Sorry, tech problems, my end. Yes, it is going on a little bit. The internet is playing up a little bit. Be Beatrice, it's been an absolute pleasure. I love the flower for your uh, little logo there. That, that's lovely. And um, well, welcome on Shirley Time. Please like the page, share this, share this out to your friends. And uh, we wish you every, every bit of success and uh, um, success there. Uh, uh, Liz, no, it was 11 a.m. It's 11 a.m. in Spain, 10 a.m. in the UK. It is uh, all the all the times there are written on the Facebook page. They're on the websites. They're on everywhere. So no, it's uh, it's 10 a.m. UK, 10 a.m. UK. Right. Okay. Now um, we're catching that time here. Just come out to two minutes past twelve, and uh, the. Um, uh, we're just about to say goodbye, but I want to say before we want to say goodbye, I want to say a big thank you to everyone who joined in the show today. We, I think we had a lovely, lovely flowy energy show and uh, we just enjoyed it. So a big thank you to everybody who sent their questions in and a big thank you to um, to my good friend Guillermo for, for joining in the show here. And um, um, it's, it's very, very nice actually. Um, but thank you. There you go, there you go, thank you. And a bit of a hoot to you all. And uh, yes, I think that's that's lovely there. And uh, go and have a lovely, lovely day, folks. There and uh, um, enjoy yourselves. And what's important here as well here is we send out loads of love to you guys, loads and loads of love. So go and have love. It's coming to lunchtime, so you can change that to that, and that's a burger. That's a burger. Is that's love. That's a burger. Love burger. Love burger. It's all the same. It's all the same. Burgers mean love too. But for me, a veggie burger. <laughs> But uh, anyway, we go. So pasties. <laughs> bon appetit and bon big love, big love, bon, bon big love and bon appetit. How's that? And uh, which I'd say very very nice. Thank you. We'll be back on again next Wednesday. And Liz, just to remind you, it's ten a.m. in the UK and eleven a.m. in Spain. And uh, thank you very much to Ellie for your lovely comments there. And thank you to everybody. We had loads of people on the show today. 116 hearts, 45 laughs. That's not that's not bad. And uh, have a nice day, says uh, says uh, Paul Sarrett up there from uh, Suffolk. And uh, Priya Lee, who's there in Norfolk, she's just saying hello. And a uh, big thank you to all. And also Susanna and everyone else who joined the show. So big, big, big thank you there. And thank you so much. Okay. Uh, next show is going to be on Sunday. Sunday, Sunday evening show. Uh, just to remind you guys again, we are an hour ahead. So we start the show at 7 o'clock in Spain, 6 o'clock in the UK. So uh, have a look at that. You guys take care. Have a lovely, lovely day. Bye-bye. Huh?